everyone included, is a vision for the future of healthcare based on a framework of mutual respect and inclusivity. We believe everyone should be respected for the expertise they can bring to discussions about the future of healthcare. Here are some of our stories. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Everyone Included. I'm Dr. Larry Chu, and we're in London in the Notting Hill neighborhood. I'm here with Dr. Amy Price and Sarah Regari. You came all the way from Stockholm. I did, To yeah. join us for this yeah. episode. So Dr. Amy Price, tell us a little bit about why we're here in London. We're here for something really exciting. We are forming a, uh, a research in action, a partnership with patients, with everyone included and research module, so a massive open online classroom and we hope you'll join. And we'll have a module in there even about how to peer review whether you're a patient, a re researcher, a clinician. Right. And um, we, what we want is we want the perspective from everyone so that everyone has a voice, whether it's a patient or um, a clinician or the researcher, so that the work that we do meshes together and um, can be the most practical solution for everyone. And it's really part of um, the project that we're doing on increasing awareness of patient-centered education and clinical effectiveness research in medical education that is uh, being supported by PCORI. Um, and we came here specifically to London um, because, you know, I think one of the organizations that's leading the effort uh, in the world to um, really help support patient partnership in research, um, particularly in dissemination of research, I think, is BMJ. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's why we're in London. We spent an entire day with some of the editors at BMJ yesterday. Um, and uh, Sarah Regari, yeah. you, um, now you are a member of BMJ's patient panel. I am, yeah, since the start. But you're also a researcher yourself. I am. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about um, your work and both on the panel and your work as a, a researcher. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm an engineer by background, but a, a couple of years ago I wanted to combine my patient experiences with my engineering skills. So I looked and tried to, to understand the healthcare aspects of things and I, I, I'm now a doctoral student at Karolinska Institute in Stockholm uh, exploring self-management of Parkinson's disease which is the disease I have as well and that led me to being invited to the, to the British Medical Journal's patient panel where I've been a member now I think five years and helping them shaping the processes and the, the strategy for, for the future. I think you um, are a little unique because you are a patient but you are also a researcher um, but I think then even among that unique group you are also someone who um, does research on herself yeah. uh, in the form of self-experimentation. Yes, that's true. Tell, tell me a little more about that. So self-experimentation has been known for a long time as a way of, of trying, starting to understand scientific processes and, and finding new, new, new ways of, for treatment and, and uh, also for new ideas. But it's been traditionally used by, by clinicians and researchers. So what we as patients with long-term conditions do, we do a lot of testing and we do a lot of self-management based on our treatments and, and what we do is essentially self-experimentation. So I, I'm trying to formalize it and making it to, to more, of, uh, trying to establish a framework and, and see if that can be used for other, by other patients as well. Can you give me an example of the type of self-experimentation that, that you do? Sure, so what I, what I have been doing, I have been, I, wonder, I was wondering how my medications affect me and how, if, if they affect varied over, over the course of a day. So I used a finger tapping test to evaluate how well my medications help me at different times of the day. And by doing that, I, because one of the aspects of Parkinson's disease is, is that you get slow, slowness of movement. And with medication that helps, that's better. 
So I, I, I was trying to find a pattern in, in, the, in the medication effect. And I did find interesting things that I couldn't have found in, in any other way because the measure of the finger tapping showed me wh where there were gaps in my treatment regimen. So, Dr. Amy Price, now you, um, are, you are currently pursuing your, your doctoral degree at Oxford in evidence-based medicine. What do you have to say about self-experimentation given that you're currently reading about evidence-based medicine at Oxford? I think that for patients, I mean patients at the most see their doctor in total probably a couple of hours a year, no matter how sick they are. And so most of it falls on the patient to, uh, to self-manage and to figure out what works. And um, they know more about themselves than anyone else. So absolutely, I think that it's the most effective way for people to be engaged. And I would hope that um, you know, device manufacturers would start to come in line with this and realize how important it is for, um, for patients and researchers and clinicians to look at the, da look at the data together and see, uh, see the patterns that are, um, that are really there. I have learned so much myself from uh, more than um, from any kind of medical care, from self-experimentation about, um, about what works to overcome certain aspects. And I think a lot of research ideas are um, born out of self-experimentation and people think um, this could work. It worked on me, now let's try it on others. Yeah. Is self-experimentation um, a form of science or is it a form of patients going rogue? I think it's a form of science, okay. uh, absolutely, because you, because you observe something, um, the, the natural scientific mind, the natural scientific response is to observe it and then test it. And um, Sarah Regari, mm -hmm. would you say self-experimentation um, is a form of um, partnership or a form of patient autonomy and uh, non-collaboration? So I think it can be both. Me too. So depending on how supportive your medical team is, Ah. And, and depending on your condition, I think, as well, and depending on your own attitudes. Uh, because if you have a medical team that is interested in this and supports you, I think you would rather do it together with them. Uh, uh, because you, you would be able to find things together that you wouldn't be able to find on your own. But I think that currently the system isn't really set up to do that in a good way. So I think, uh, I think there's work to be done there. So what I'm hearing is Self-experimentation can be a form of partnership, yeah. but it takes both sides to want to collaborate. Definitely, both sides to, to respect want to and, and acknowledge each other's knowledge and, and, and experiences. And experience. And they can add to each other. So if yeah, definitely, I, you know, because I've I've done self-experimentation. There might be something that I don't know from a medical perspective, and uh, my doctor can say, oh, that happened, uh, that happened for this reason, and then that, that gives me a depth that I didn't have before. And then I've also had a doctor say, oh, I, maybe, do you mind if I share this idea with uh, some of my other patients because, uh, you know, because it's helped you? So to me, that's like kind of a true partnership because you're helping each other. And often, and both I think the patient um, and the clinician or doctor, um, oftentimes that grows, so now when my doctor might get an unusual patient um, that has a condition that's similar and he doesn't, he's, he's not quite sure where to go with that, he'll say, have you ever come across this? Have you read anything or have you met people like this? Um, I haven't had enough time to read up on it, on all the appointments and I thought maybe you could help them. So to me, that's like a beautiful partnership. I agree, and, and my own neurologist is very interested in what I do. I, I took yeah. this data when I, when I used the topic test and showed him, and he found it really interesting, and we had a very interesting discussion about it, and it resulted in me in shifting the, the, the timing slightly. Uh, and he wanted to have it into the healthcare record, but there wasn't any way for him to, to import, not even a, a, a PDF file, so I couldn't put any free data in there. But now when I see him, we, we have a discussion, every, we have had that for years. I've been with him for over 25 years now as a patient. But he also uses things that we have learned from my treatment that he applies to other patients. And I yeah. think that's 
very interesting and I think that's the way it should be. Well, I think um, we'll, we'll end uh, on that note, which is I think um, we are more than just our conditions that we have multiple talents, engineering, sure, scientists, yeah. patients bring incredible expertise um, to solve problems. Um, and uh, I think our trip to London has shown there's so many interesting people out there and uh, we're going to chat with more of them today. Fabulous. Okay, let's Look forward to it. Uh,